Welcome everyone. Welcome to Exploding Cinema. This is the third of our online shows. We've uh, we, we solved some of the technical problems of the previous shows and uh, we anticipate a whole raft of brand new technical problems for this show. But uh, yeah, I hope you're just going to uh, bear with us on that. And uh, tonight I'd like to uh, introduce a couple of the members of Exploding on the uh, films tonight, on the decks playing the uh, OBS is Adam, who's... Whoop, Where's he gone? Adam, let's have a look at you. Oh, here I am. Say hello to the people. Hello. <laughs> okay, and uh, on the door is David. If there's any, he's, he's going to prevent any invasions from uh, happening. Um, <laughs> this is Duncan. He doesn't really have a, uh, an assigned role, I don't think. But, no. Uh, <clears throat> you'll, be, uh, you'll be doing the next show. Yeah. The next show. Um, who else have we got here? Uh, we done David. Ah, what, what about, um, there's uh, James here. So what, this is the way we're going to do this. I'm going to show a film, and I'm going to do a bit of uh, talking in between. And if the filmmakers are here in the Zoom, we are going to welcome them and uh, talk to them about their films. If any of you have a question for the filmmakers, best place to put it is in the Zoom chat. And we will uh, see if we can. Get to it. We, um, if you seem trustworthy, we will unmute <laughs> and have you put you up on the uh, on the screen to ask your question. But uh, you know that that could all go pear shaped. But uh, let's worry about that when it happens. And um, so, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce George Gower. It's, this is his film we're going to show first. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> So um, uh, this is my film and it's called The Transaction and um, it's filmed inside a camera obscura and um, I made it as part of um, this year's World Pinhole Photography Day um, <laughs> um, um, exhibition. So yeah, I hope you like the film. Great. Great stuff. Thanks, George. We'll, uh, we'll have a chat with you afterwards. Let's, yeah. um, let's have okay, a look at George's film. Okay, so we can go to the film. Let's go to the film. Let's just start the show. And welcome, everyone. Uh, George, uh, George, can you hear us? Yes, yeah, I can, yeah. yeah. Excellent, yeah. right. So firstly, can you explain for the people uh, what a camera obscura is? Yeah, so a, um, a camera obscura is basically a kind of, um, it's, a, it's a kind of like um, chink in, 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 in a kind of um, darkened, uh, in a kind of darkened um, uh, window, I suppose. And um, it basically projects the image from outside into the space inside, and that and the space outside was my garden, and the inside space happened to be my bedroom. So, yeah. So, did you build that thing yourself, the camera? Yeah, screen? yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I built it myself, actually. Yeah. Um, I can I can I can show you it if you want me to. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Let's see if this works. This is an exploding first, I think. Yeah, so I let's just see if this works. Um, hang on, hang on. So, so that there is the, um, so that there is, is the uh, window where we built the uh, camera obscura. And, it, and um, yeah, and, and there was a kind of, and it was all blacked out. We blacked it out using um, gaffer tape and, cardboard and black paper and there was a chink of light about there 
there and it must have been about um one centimeter wide and it basically projected the garden um into my bedroom and the projection and 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 the place where i shot the film was about there so wow. so the film would have been projected onto there um yeah so if you see if you see into the garden the um the, the table is um there so so the table would have been projected from there into uh that corner of my bedroom there if that makes sense yeah 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 that's amazing so it's like a pinhole camera basically yeah 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 i mean i did make it for world pinhole camera day so kind of makes right. sense Wow, oh, amazing! And uh, so you and you you filmed a guy putting a putting some money down, and then another one buying something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, picking it up. Yeah, definitely yeah. a film. Definitely a film for our times. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. So, what was what was the transaction? What was the object being? Um, it, it was it, it was a money. It was a twenty pound note. Yeah. Yeah. For for what though? Um, I, 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 ha um, I hadn't really thought that far ahead. Um, I just know <laughs> to know that it was a transaction of money, really. Mm. Wow. That's um, that's great. And what's next for the uh, for the pinhole for the? Um, well, I'm not really sure at the moment because we we um, we we took it down. Uh, so I, I don't know if I'll be any more experiments at the moment. Oh, cool. Um, let's see if we have any uh, questions coming up. Just, uh, just to let you all know, the, uh, the, the, the chat box in the Zoom is a good place to ask questions for filmmakers. Uh, also, the, uh, the, the, the YouTube page has got some, uh, uh, mostly uh, people reporting various technical faults and sound problems. Uh, so we're going to have to just, uh, you're going to have to go bear with us until we sort all that out. We've had a bit of a nightmare. Anyway, we'll, we'll work it out. Let's go on to the next film by Grace Connor. Oh, by the way, uh, George, thank you very much. Thank you very that's, much. For that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Let's, that's uh, fine. Let's, have, let's have another one for a future show. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll try to make some more films. Yeah. Brilliant. The next film is by Grace Connor. And uh, Grace is a very um, uh, long-term Submitted to Exploding. We've shown lots of her films in the past. It's the first time we've shown one of hers online. It's called He Still Has a Pulse.
Okay, right. That's uh, I don't know. It was still it was still running for me. Maybe I've got a, a slow stream going on here. Uh, Grace, Grace Connor, there with he still has a pulse. Great name for a film. Gwendolyn says that it's lovely. Brilliant. Okay. Unless Grace, if Grace is here, she, she could identify herself in the Zoom chat. Otherwise, we're going to move on. Um, no? Okay. All right. Well, then um, we're going to move on from that. Whoops. Ah, oh, magic is all gone. There we go. Uh, <laughs> then we're going to move on from, uh, from, from He Still Has a Pulse to... Ambrosia by Joss Monson. Uh, I think I saw Joss Monson's name in the chat here. Maybe not. Hi. Joss Monson. I saw, there you are. Hey, excellent. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Now, um, <laughs> sometimes we ask uh, filmmakers if they'd like to intro the, their film, or shall we just look at it and then we'll watch it and then we'll, uh, we'll talk to you. If you have anything to say beforehand, then... Um, let us know. Yeah, sure. Okay, I'll introduce it. So this is Ambrosia uh, by me, Joss Monson. Enjoy. <laughs> Perfect. Adam, let's have a look.
Great stuff. George. Joss, I mean, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Hi. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I've got two, uh, uh, sort of two questions. It's one question and it's a two-parter, really, uh, okay. which is, <laughs> did you make that film during lockdown? And um, it, was that the reason why it was basically a uh, 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 one actor and one inanimate object? Uh, I have to admit, uh, I, I, I made it like five years ago. <laughs> oh, <right>. So, no. <laughs> but, it, uh, yeah, so it's, it's got nothing to do whatsoever with what's going on right now. Right. But, <laughs> yeah. That's fine. I, we, don't, I, we, don't, we don't insist that people uh, show us fresh films, <laughs> any, any yeah. film at all. Um, and, uh, I mean, what inspired you to, uh, to, to make a film with a... Uh, about a man's love for a, I guess it's a dummy. Yeah. So um, I was kind of thinking, like, I remember when I was making it, um, uh, I was thinking about, like, how, um, like, we, it, it is mostly about, like, inanimate objects and how we kind of, um, we, we we kind of put trust and like we 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 personalize I, I can't remember the word like um make them human hmm. so like my idea was to make this like silent movie um sort of inspired by like those kind of um old like black and white movies um and yeah <laughs> right <laughs> kind of thing yeah Right. Were there any were there any um, uh, films that inspired you to? Uh, to... Yeah, um, Pink Flamingos by um, John Waters. Like, mm -hmm. I think that was a really big uh, inspiration. I know it it doesn't seem very <laughs> relative at all, but like, I remember watching that, and then I thought to myself, okay, the acting in this is very terrible, so I can probably get away with that <laughs> myself. <laughs> so yeah, mm -hmm. that was. That was a big inspiration, and 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 like I said, like those kind of black and white movies um, from uh, uh, that was like the piano in the background and like the words coming up and that sort of thing. Pink flamingos. Did that? Was that the one that had the the famous line? Oh my God! Someone sent me a bowel movement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really? with, with the yeah. 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 It's one of my one of my favorite lines in uh, cinematic history. There. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's fine. I, I really wasn't um, expecting to uh, to to hear that as a as an influence for it. Maybe I should revisit that movie. Yeah. No. Yeah. It is. Uh, it is a good movie. <laughs> We've got a, uh, a a a comment from Robert Johnson saying, "Love the Debussy." Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, was... Should I talk about that? Yeah. So I well, I remember I I went to an exhibition. This was like five years ago. So I'm kind of um running off what i remember but yeah the um Debus the debussy i used two of his uh um what do you call it like pieces yeah and um yeah i just thought that they really worked um like i, I remember going to an exhibition and it was about um funnily enough it was like uh puppets and um i don't know if anybody else saw it it was in the ica or yeah, it was it was a while ago, but yeah. <laughs> mm. um, <laughs> um, anyone else uh, have a, a question? Someone said, "Oh, Gwendolyn says the music was made it very sweet and poignant." Did you did you have a point where you edited the film and saw the pictures and then thought, "Well, what would this? What would the best music be for this for this scene?" Or did you have the music in mind all the time? Um, so the music came after the um, after the the video was made, I think, um, because um, I I remember like showing it to the colleagues and stuff because I made this um, during college, um, and everybody said that it like really worked well with um, just any music. <laughs> mm. But then I w I wanted to have a kind of like um, a kind of like I said like that kind of uh, jolly like piano um, mm. from like those kind of old times kind of feel so uh, yeah it's, it's kind of interesting what it does like um, 
like a lot of people have said like that the music really does kind of evoke kind of something that like if if the music wasn't there it would be quite sinister i don't know <laughs> like how i'm kind of like um yeah so what are you uh, what are you up to now what's your latest so um i i'm at university at the moment and i'm just going into my third year uh i have an art page um like a uh, instagram that i regularly um put like uh whatever i'm working on yeah there. <laughs> uh and i just make art like and videos and everything like that range from like um escapism to uh like kind of more personal stuff to like escapism mm. and that sort of thing cool um what what you, can you give us a plug for your uh your your instagram yeah sure it's um joss munson so my name is somewhere here <laughs> yeah. uh hopefully uh joss munson art so a-r-t just just Art. Yeah. thank you excellent all right well thank you very much joss for uh sharing that with us thank you thank you very much for letting me be part of the show it's great yeah oh no worries yes yes we uh we love filmmakers and we love films and it was a no-brainer to uh put yours on tonight um so thanks there joss and uh the next film we've got coming through um, coming on now is uh, called Rocket Lolly by Professor, Professor Shisandra and um, it's, uh, it's a film I haven't even seen because it came to us very late but the professor is here and she will be able to talk us through it afterwards so uh, let's have a look at Rocket Lolly okay hello um Operating on a very tiny crew here, i.e. just me, so I've just had to do the sound check, set up the camera, lights, um, and I'm interviewing myself. Um, yeah, so good social distancing is going on all the time, because it's only me.
course, in this new world of double think and pseudo science and completely off the mark modelling, who can really say? Best just follow instructions, right? And I feel that the more people that give voice to talking about um, the elephant in the living room, the better. And from a variety of um, perspectives. Hey, brilliant stuff there from uh, Professor Sh Shisandra. <laughs> Let's bring prof the professor up there. <laughs> Hello, professor. Can we uh, can we uh, talk to you for a moment there? Yeah, definitely. Firstly, what are you professor of? Yeah, so uh, my background is um, uh, basically that film is about what we're what's happening in the world right now. Um, which a lot of people aren't talking about what's really happening right now. Um, but there are a lot of sizable amount of people that have been on to this for a long time. Um, I mm. smelt what was going on immediately. I mean, I, I, um, I did my dissertation many years ago on um, photomontage and photography as a physical weapon. And uh, there's, a, there's a piece of work from John Hartfield who did a lot of anti-Nazi stuff. And then I also interviewed um, Peter Kennard, who did a lot of the um, CND stuff. So bringing images together to, um, to uh, put out um, things that are being censored is quite important. I'm rereading um, George Orwell's at the moment. Um, so, yeah, it's been a very busy time because mm -hmm. so much is going on. And I'm not, I'm not buying the mainstream narrative one little bit, by the way. Ah, um, so so where, this, where, do you, where do you get your, your information so, from, your news and stuff like that? Um, definitely not on the mainstream. 
I, I, I gave up listening to the BBC, gave up listening to mainstream media years ago. I've never actually really had a TV. Um, I have only Netflix for my child at the moment, and you know, there's not much on there. So, um, in recent times, I've been getting uh, what I can from wherever I can, and there's huge censorship going on, which is why I'm aware of how much shutdown's going on. Um, mm. But I've been doing a lot of research on health stuff for the last four years, so I'm very aware of the uh, medical mafia, the big pharma and all of this. So mm. uh, I can give you some names that uh, you might want to look into if you're interested in what's really going on. Dr. John Bergman, I recommend. I was listening to him for health stuff anyway. He's on it. Um, mm -hmm. There's also Dr. Shiva. Um, and uh, Brian Rose from London Real is putting out a lot of good stuff. Um, David Icke is, everyone laughed at him 30 years ago and they're not laughing now. Uh, he <laughs> had the biggest live stream in, in history on May the 3rd. Um, and there's another one coming up soon. That was the third one. What does, what does David Icke have to say about COVID? You want to listen to it, Ben. Get onto London yeah. Real and listen to it. He's got another one coming up in, I think, about seven days in a week's time. Mm. Um, the May the 3rd one was amazing. They deplatformed him from YouTube like days before it because they couldn't bear to, for, for anyone to listen to him. London Real managed to get a platform together to be able to stream that um, live. Um, and it had a mm. very big audience. A lot of people around the world are taking note. Right. Um, We've got some. There's um, a lot of. Uh, there's a. Yeah. So I've got let, some let me just response. go through. Let, let oh, me just right. go through the list quickly. So we. All right. All right. I'm just going to go um, through the list. Dr. John Bergman, Dr. John Lee, Dr. Judy Mankiewicz, Dr. Andrew Kaufman, Dr. Michael Levitt, Dr. Uh, Pam Popper, Dr. Shiva, Dr. Eric Berg, Ivor Cummings, um, Professor Dolores Cahill. Professor Carl Hennigan, Rosa, uh, I can't pronounce it, but she, right. she will tell you all about Agenda 21, which is now being called Agenda um, uh, 2030. Um, mm -hmm. They're moving the goalposts. Uh, Dr. Vernon Coleman is cheering me up a lot. He's a, he's a, a British guy, and his uh, posts on YouTube are brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Vadana Shiva, um, she's got a good book. Where is it? Ah, <laughs> Who Really Feeds the World? Because um, oh. uh, basically, they're getting us through the health, they're then going to get us through the vaccines, get us through the, um, the, the uh, whole surveillance thing. And uh, yeah, the food source thing is very important. This is all stuff, the food and the health stuff I've been on to because of the my own health stuff. Um, so, yeah, I'm a bit ahead of the game on this one. I'm, I'm well prepared. Mm. In terms of the filmmaking, um, I've given enough of the didactic. I was trying to actually make a very didactic film, um, but uh, <laughs> it came out quite arty. So I just thought, yeah, let the imagery speak for itself. Mm. So... Actually, in terms of what's, what's happening in that film, I videoed myself with my camp, with my phone in um, at Serpentine, which I've been going to more or less every day, and meditating and doing an OM um, to basically try and calm, just to connect and try and calm the world down because you go out and there's been all these people freaked out, you know, um, mm. and it's, it's been crazy to see that. Mm. But um, and also not to be freaked out because you know that uh, it's kind of there isn't there isn't the science behind it. I've been going past St Thomas's Hospital every day, even the day that um, you know uh, the Prime Minister was in there. They had all the press out. Some woman with a big camera, and I said, "Oh, are you um, taking note then of like how empty it all is around here?" And she didn't like that. Um, I said, well, if you want the story, you, you ought to go, you know, what, why aren't you getting the story? And she said, oh, well, we're not allowed in. So I said, well, how are you, 
how are you giving the story to people then you know mm. um yeah so in, anyway in terms of filmmaking um i'm very heavily influenced by um when i did my ma i looked into animation um and uh and storytelling so i looked into shadow puppets from java and the um czech animator jan svankmeyer oh i love jan svankmeyer yeah most students yeah. love him um <laughs> And then this is another good book, um, Animating the Unconscious. Um, so yeah, a lot of my, uh, a lot of that film that you've just seen has a lot of symbolism going on there. So it was an outside shot, which is kind of like saying that, you know, we've been forced to stay in at the moment, which has never been done in human history. Quarantining sick people. Yes, that makes sense. Quarantining healthy people and crashing an economy, no, doesn't make sense at all. The collateral damage from that is going to be immense. It's going to, you know, anyway, that's all part of the plan, though. So, yeah, you can see from the animation, you've got the, the um, meltdown of the coin going on there. You saw something that, that looked like a, um, a medical thing coming up and someone getting squashed under it. Um, hiding yeah. all the hiding all the truths um, mm. that are actually going on. Um, we're we're getting some uh, we're getting some comments here from uh, okay. Robert Juritz has has done a couple. He said a very high tech movie, very impressed. He also said loved the Mbira and double screens. And uh, we've got another uh, George Gara says he's also a fan of Jan Svankmeyer. Uh, not quite how you spell it, George, but yeah. <laughs> Right. Oh, he's been he's been <laughs> corrected already. Okay, another another audience member has, been, has corrected George. So, uh, yes, go and look. I love his film about food best. The food one. Yeah, he always has food. Well, you saw I had mm. food in that one, which was mm. the old lolly. But mm. Anyway, lot uh, you kind of missed quite a lot because of the um, uh, the quality. Obviously, going through YouTube Live and uh, compressing it to an MP4 of that size, you kind of lose the. Uh, the um, subtlety, oh, well. but um, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, and this is this is the instrument you might be interested in. The sound that was going ah. on. This is this I bought um, on a beach in Goa from a South African guy who made these from sardine jars. Look at it. It's oh, basically cool. a kalimba. Um, it's a very beautiful instrument and uh, nice. And it's great because anyone can play it, you know. Hmm. They're all they're all harmonically kind of uh, in tune. I mean, well, they're sort of they work yeah, they work together, right? They can go out of tune, but um, I hmm. think this one's still in tune. Hmm. But I did mix in a little bit of someone else playing a kalimba, which I took a snippet of, and it's and I slowed it down, and it was um, uh, the, the the sound of silence, and that was oh. to do with the sens censorship thing. Oh. Um, oh, and well, one more thing about the film is you put you. I don't know if you noticed, but I reversed the whole footage and slowed it down. So the meditation is completely in reverse and slowed down. So you hear an om, but it's it's actually going backwards. Ah. Um, so right. yeah. So in terms of the sound, I I found that quite interesting. Okay. So it became yeah. a mo. Okay. Last question. Where, and this is very important to me in particular, where can we find Zoom lollies these days? I know they're still making well, them. Well, I got that from Marks and Spencers, but it wasn't that um, great. I don't I, know whether it was a real Zoom, but it was a Marks and Spencers version, not as yeah, good as the real ones. Yeah, the real ones are still being made. I found them in a corner shop once about oh, three weeks ago and never found them again. Unfortunately, they're all being made by Nestle now. Uh, uh, yeah, my, Nestle. My my daughter was very disappointed by the Zoom lolly, which is why I had the chance to actually <laughs> use one in the film. If they'd been good, they wouldn't have been left in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Professor Shisandra. Thank you and, very uh, much, yeah. Do you send us another one? Great. Loving and, the show. Uh, great. Thumbs up, Brilliant. everybody. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, let's move on. Uh, let's move on to the next film, which is uh, well. I what I did was uh, for this for this film I programmed. I wanted to 
only show films by people who haven't had one shown yet on this uh, or these series of online shows. And uh, this one, it slipped through the cracks. This one's called Run Fall by Gwendolyn Audrey Foster.
Lovely stuff there. Lovely stuff. And I know that Gwendolyn is here. Uh, Gwendolyn has said that Runfall is an experiment in automatism, which is automatic writing via chance editing made in the spirit of surrealism. She says, am I going to have to read out your, your thing here, Gwendolyn? I think she's a little shy. A dream of running from a red monster connecting 50s hysteria with the socio-political anxieties of the present. I think it's a nightmare about the menace of Trump and the creeping fascism here in the USA. Yes, collaging and messing with colors. I only use iMovie. Great. Well, if you want to learn more from uh, Gwenzen about that film, then uh, she's on the chat and she'll be happy to answer any of your questions. But for the rest of us, we've uh, got a show to do. And we're moving on now to Grown Ups by Robbie Gibbon. And this is definitely a film made for the times. So uh, let's have a look at Grown Ups by Robbie Gibbon. I just don't know why you're getting so stressed about all this. Because you're not taking it seriously. I am. Well, then just tell me. Fine. I'd go with a macaroon cream. Macaroon cream? Yep. Not the water chestnut? No, the macaroon cream. <clears throat> right. <laughs> what? I just said right. Yeah, but you don't mean right, do you? You mean, Dan, I don't really want to give you the options to so just read my mind and tell me what I want to hear. Yeah, you picked the stupid one. Oh, for fuck's sake, girl, they look the bloody same. The same? You look me in the eye right now and tell me that these look the same and I swear to God I'll divorce you. Divorce? You promise? Daniel! <laughs> okay, okay. You're right. They're different. And actually, looking at them now, I think... I prefer the water chestnut. Really? Really. You're the best. <laughs> but on which one is water chestnut? Oh my God. No, 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 I know, I'm sorry I'm being a twat. I just, I just want everything to look perfect for when you get back. You don't even know when that'll be yet. Exactly. All the more reason I should get on it. If it's next week, amazing. If it's next month, great. I've got even more time. And if it's next year or the year after? And if it's next year, we do exactly what we've been doing all these months. And we just imagine our lives together after all this shit's over. Oh, speaking of, did you get the parcel I sent you? I think so. <laughs> it's like a little plastic tub. That's the one. What am I meant to do with that? Wanking it. <laughs> Excuse me? Wanking it. You know, fill it up with your spermatosa, empty your sticky bank account. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with the concept of a wank, Elle. <laughs> the question is, why? Well, we said we were going to start trying in the summer. And I'm ovulating at the end of the month, and they say that the post takes about two weeks now, oh. so we're lucky. What? Oh. Nothing. I'll do it. <sighs> Okay, great. <laughs> what? Oh? You want me to do it now? <laughs> what? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not now, now. <laughs> no, whenever you get the chance. Cool. So when do you think that you'll <laughs> get... <laughs> All right, okay, Christ, okay. Just... Do it in your own time or when you're watching Corrie. Or... Watching Corrie? You don't think I've noticed that every time I put on Corrie, you oh so subtly have to go and have a shower. You are so bloody predictable. I go for a shower to get away from that bollocks. <laughs> you are such a shit liar. <laughs> you're such a shit detective. You really think I'd go and have a wang over Ken fucking Barlow? <laughs> Many a man has, Dan. Many a man has. <laughs> I quite like Ken. I mean, he's just a geriatric womanizer. No, I mean for a name. Ken. Yeah, but for a girl, though. Little baby Ken. Don't take the piss. My precious princess Ken. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our christening of our little darling daughter, Ken. Fine. I've gone off it. You've ruined everything I love. I'm no longer keen on this name at all. Thanks for that. <laughs> Anytime. If we did accidentally give my kid a shit name, do you think it's easy enough to change it? Yeah, I'm sure people do it all the time. 
You know what people don't do all the time? What? Wank into a cup to impregnate the missus. <laughs> Seriously, though, if we do have a kid, don't you think we should wait until all this is over? Until I'm back home for good? I mean, you probably won't even be able to get an appointment to have my jizzlets implanted. Not a problem. Look what I've bought. See? Is that one of those things that um, Americans use on turkeys in TV shows? <laughs> it's a turkey baster. <laughs> so I'll just fill it up with your little ends and then insert it L. right into my L. vagina. L. <laughs> Don't you think this is all just a little too clinical? Okay. No, I, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. We can make it nice. We'll make it nice. I'll do mood lighting, I'll wear sexy underwear, like saucy camera angles. Hell. <laughs> I just think if we do have a baby, I'm not sure I want it this way. If. What? If we have a baby, you keep saying if. Dan, why do you keep saying if? And this is where you groan and you tell me I'm a nightmare and it's just bloody semantics, whatever the fuck that means, because of course you want a baby. You've, you've always wanted a baby. So when you say if, you don't really mean if, do you? You know I love you. I can't believe this. No. But we have spoken about this forever. Since we first got together, when we got engaged, even before we got fucking married, I asked you because you know how fucking much this means to me and you've always always said you wanted children i did i mean i do i oh, do fuck you oh, fuck Look, I think that we just need to... to What's your favourite memory from when you were little? What? What's your favourite memory from childhood? I don't know. Please, Al. It's probably playing at this crappy little maze near my dad's house like the path was so trodden through you couldn't get lost if you tried but we <laughs> spent hours in there mum was football I hate what a little cliche of a kid I was but just footy with my mates our child won't have that won't have what? Anything. Dan, you are overreacting. Am I? Because the last time I checked, I hadn't seen my fucking wife for over a year because I was in the wrong side of the pissing country when the lockdown started. And yet I know they say it'll be safe to go out soon, but will it? The world was already fucking breaking long before this. And who are we to bring something new into it? Dan, we would give them a good life. Whatever happens, we'd give them a life full of love. But love isn't good enough. How can I be a dad over a screen? And I want to be a dad, and I really fucking do. It's just selfish, isn't it? Isn't it? How could it not be selfish to bring some poor little innocent sod into a world that is so Totally, totally fucked. I've got to go. Ow. No, it's fine. I've um, I just got all of this water chestnut shit. So, um, I'll speak to you later. Yeah. Okay. I love you.
I love you too. Are we? Uh, yes, we're back on. Robbie Gibbon. Is uh, Robbie Gibbon here? Uh, I don't think he is. Let me find the funky Robbie Gibbon. Nope. Okay, then. Great stuff. Why don't we uh, um, move on to the next one? But before we do, I've got a couple of uh, announcements to make. What's the word? House clearing. Anyway, Exploding Cinema is an open access film show. Anyone can send a film to us and we are open access. We will get around to showing it sooner or later. And also anyone can join us to make uh, these shows happen, which uh, it takes a, a good few people, believe it or not. It's not just me fiddling around in the dark here. We, um, we, we accept anyone's help. And now we are online, we are kind of, uh, international as well so uh, you don't even have to live in london like the rest of us to help put on shows very exciting also if uh, because we're completely non-profit and non-sponsored you can donate to us if you want you can go to our website and find the the donate button and uh, it would really help us out because uh, zoom charge us for various um various uh, uh, shows that we put on because uh, we don't we use the uh, the pay version so we can get more of you into the into the room and have more than one host so with that in mind let's move on to our next film the next film is okay it's a very short one this but i've watched it about 40 times because it's fascinating uh, i will tell you why i think it's fascinating afterwards and hopefully we can get andy gell on i think the film is called, th f oh God, Frithriever. Maybe Fever with a three instead of an E or, or something like that. FR3VR. I don't know if that's the name of the film. It might be. But um, blink and you'll miss it. It's a quick 22 second film by Andy Gell. And I need you more than want you. And I want you for all and that's it for a three -ver by uh, andy gell andy is he, is andy here i just noticed that um at the closer he got to the word time um, the, the more, the slower the film went, which was uh, really fascinating. It was, uh, it was a bit of a rolling time stretch there. And I have no idea why uh, Yoko Ono's face was in the background there. And I guess unless I call Andy, we will never know. Um, uh, Adam, that, are you there? Yeah, uh, Gwendolyn says that that is lovely. And she also says, Andy Gill, is that like the Andy Gill from Gang of Four? Oh, uh, I've been, no, it's Gell, G-E-L-L. -L. Ah, there you go. Okay, so. Uh, which, which, which gang of four are we talking about? Wasn't there like a... Uh... Post-punk band, I'm guessing. Oh, okay, okay. Because there was a, there were various political groupings called gang of four, weren't there? There was a, there was a Chinese... Um... At least in China, yeah. Yeah, there's a Chinese one. And didn't they call those uh, SD, SDP guys the gang of four back in the day in the... Back in the eighties, uh, I think so. No idea. Okay, <laughs> I just oh god, it shows my age. I remember the SDP. Um, Robert uh, John says very short and concise. Ha ha. <laughs> and just to say as well uh, that any of the comments made uh, during the program are not necessarily those of Exploding Cinema. Oh yeah, we had a little bit of controversy stirred up there by. Uh, by Professor uh, Shisandra. Um, a few people. Uh, Philo says that uh, Annette Philo says that there's no conspiracy. You know, I went to Morrison's the other day, and um, I was. They had one of those uh, cleansing stations at the uh, at the front, where you can get a, a, a rag and a, and some some alcohol, and you can wipe down your 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 trolley before you use it. 
And I was there wiping down the handles of a basket I picked up. And a woman walked past behind me and I, she said, said, don't bother, don't bother, it's the government. It's the government, it's, it's, it's not happening, it's the government. And just walked on. And um, I thought, you know, fuck you. You know, <laughs> a very good friend of mine died of COVID. You're gonna tell me it's not happening and it's the government, honestly. But of course, I didn't say this out loud because I'm English, you know, and we, we, don't, we don't get into public confrontations like that. Well, we do sometimes, but uh, I don't. Okay. okay, we've got some applause there from George. Ah, good. Thank you, thank you, George, yes. Um, we would unmute everyone. That Andy Gill actually died from the disease. What, did he? Yeah. What are we going to find out? Okay, that's in the comments as well in chat. Uh, okay. Yeah, well, we're going to have to seek some uh, confirmation of that, I'm afraid. Um, <laughs> he was certainly alive when he submitted this to us a couple and of weeks Berlin ago. Berlin says, it's frightening that we live in an era when people think that a pandemic could be a huge con. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, anyway, well... Exactly. Let's, uh, let's move on, shall we, from uh, Magnus Dell to the next film. It's called Cabin Fever by Magnus Irvin. And uh, yeah, we're staying on the, uh, we're staying on the virus uh, subject here. And why not? This is, uh, this is all we, we artists can do here is to, uh, is to react to everything that's going on here and try and bring some insight into all of this. So let's have a look at Cabin Fever. It's a great one, very funny. stuff there Magnus Irvin I really wanted to find out if he got that that poor lady to actually uh, consent to be in the film or if he just turned up in that nuts nutty suit okay exceptional I genuinely thought the lady at the ticket office wasn't in on the act at the start I also want an answer to this question oh damn it Magnus <laughs> why do you have to leave us hanging like that <laughs> Oh, here's George. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I just want to say that I, um, I, 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 I really like the film. Um, I know, I know, Magnus isn't here, but I, I really like the film. I thought it was really, um, thought it was really um, effective. I thought the kind of whole like, um, the whole, the whole kind of like creation of the uh, monster. I thought was really well done, and I thought the person who actually, I don't, I don't know who it was who actually went out and. Um, 
we actually um, we actually went out and uh, played the monster, but I thought they had a lot of kind of um, guts to actually go out into London and uh, play the um, cardboard monster. Mm. There's a lot of kind of confidence to actually go and do that. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it was Magnus inside the thing, or else maybe it was Magnus's uh, partner or someone, and yeah. he, he persuaded yeah. them to, uh, to, do, to get up there. Fantastic suits. It should go in the V&A. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Magnus, pin cushions of the flesh, Irvin. That's uh, someone who's uh, given the guy a, a nickname right there. Cushions. Pin cushions of the flesh. It was a film they made and they submitted it to Exploding about 15 years ago or something. It was really, really good. It was prayer cushions. Prayer cushions of the flesh. Oh, oh. Prayer cushions of the flesh. Well, maybe we can show that next time. <clears> hmm. <throat> I've got it on no, I think it's well. Listen, well, I'll tell him it went down well, so I can only assume it did because uh, you know uh, we <laughs> we've muted everyone here. Uh, fabulous costume says Duncan Riki. There he is, fabulous costume, fabulous, and he's he's got his mic off. Never mind. I've been trying to unmute him, but he he's I don't know what he, he doesn't want to be. Uh, yeah, very. Yeah, thanks, Duncan. Fabulous costume. Yeah, thank you, Duncan. Great. Now job. I'm it. You can hear me now. Now I can hear him. Yes, yes. Fabulous costume. I thought amazing. We 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 said that Incredible. three times. <laughs> I know you have. I. I thought well, I'd... Your outfit is rather fetching as well, Duncan. It's another iteration. Hmm. Do you like it? Yeah. Sleeves. <laughs> okay. All right, we're all having fun with the green screen, as you can see. Um, <laughs> I've got my piece de resistance coming up, so stay tuned for that. Um, but for next, and I know the filmmaker is here, a film called Oh Boy by the famous Funky Porcini, who uh, any of you uh, who were alive in the 90s and uh, since then, any of you who are alive now ought to be aware of Funky Porcini. And I had an idea where um, if anyone has the, feels the need to get up and dance during this next film, uh, we're going to spotlight them so we can all see them. It's going to work, going to go great. So uh, Adam, time for Oh Boy.
Ah, we are back. We are back. Fantastic. And we have the great James Bradell here from uh, Funky Porcini. Hello, James. Come to hear you, James. I'll tell you what, while James is sorting himself out, why don't we do the raffle? Let's do it. Let's do the raffle, right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the way we do the raffle. Uh, when we used to do live shows, and we will again, we, uh, we used to put on, we used to give people a raffle ticket in, uh, on their way indoors every, uh, every show. And then we would yeah, pull the raffle ticket out of the, out of the uh, hat. And uh, then obviously the winner gets a prize. You all know how raffles work. Well, this is the, uh, the online version. What we're gonna do, you're gonna get to choose your own numbers. This is more like a lottery than a raffle, really. You're gonna just choose your own numbers and you are going to write those numbers into the Zoom chat, or if you're on, just watching this on YouTube, put them on the, in the YouTube comments. Choose a number between one and 100. And uh, Adam, do you have the random number generator? I do. Let me fire Excellent. it. Excellent. Excellent. Well, let's, uh, let's let people give them a chance to write some numbers into the Zoom chat. That's right. You just open the chat and write only a number. We had to do this. Um, we have to get them to choose the numbers first, obviously, because uh, there's too many cheaters out there. There they are, they're all coming in. Gwendolyn says number one, Robert Juris number 57, 49, 55, they're all coming in. Damn, George, you took my favorite number, but hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm uh, disqualified from entering anyway. Um, we'll give it a, a, a minute or two, well, a couple of seconds left to uh, everyone to choose a number. If we, no one hits the exact number, then we will award it to the closest number. If two people choose the same number and it wins, which has never happened in uh, three online shows, we are going to uh, have, a, have, a, have a, a playoff for the uh, amazing prize. And I won't show you what the prize is because uh, firstly, we want to find the winner first. And uh, secondly, if I show you the prize now, it might discourage people from entering because that's the kind of uh, budget we have for our uh, for uh, Morgan, Morganico, you cannot, you're an exploder. It's a free tin foil hat, isn't it? I think Morganico got the last one, the last prize. So he's got some brass neck entering the raffle again. All right, we've got enough numbers, I think. Okay, so. All right, here we go. Now I'm gonna, let's, wait, wait, let's wait, let me put like your video. I'm okay. going, I'm going okay. to hit the button now. And the number is 32. 32. Oh, well, we've got a couple of 36s. Um, Who's close? So, a couple of 36s. Well, well, let's. Um, let's 30, it's 36, which is the closest, uh, because right. two has come in since I made the announcement. <laughs> So someone, did someone write 32 after you did it? Someone tried to game the system there. Yeah, someone called one plus two minus three. I think we should just uh, give it to him just, just for the sheer like moxie of doing that. Let's do that then. I don't know. <laughs> it's a free tin foil hat, isn't it? What's that? The free tin foil hat. The free tin foil hat. No, it's better than that. It's the same as last time. It's a panettone. Ooh, yummy, yummy. We will send it by post to. Okay, uh, one, okay, one plus two minus three says yay. Hooray. Is this the, was that the winner? Yes. Um, Fantastic. Well, send us an address so that we can post it to you. Yeah, we got these cheap from Italy just before the outbreak. I'm not sure why. You can send they us were, an address by email. Yes, email to explodingcinema at hotmail.com. Send us your address. The last two people who won uh, refused the prize, funnily enough, because they didn't want to stay in all day waiting for uh, the postman to come. But I ask you, what else has anyone got to do except stay in all day these days? Okay, one plus two minus three says thanks. Fantastic. Should we see if we can uh, go back to James and see if... Uh, no, no, he doesn't want to talk. 
that we could uh, read out some of the things that were said while his film was playing. Good idea. Which was a blast from the past and a big smile, okay, from Gwendolyn. Um, and dance time, exclamation <laughs> mark, from Robert. Well, what people don't realize is that uh, that, that piece of music was not the original 60s uh, piece of music. It was remixed and uh, rejigged and, um, by, by uh, James there. Yes, he's nodding. Yeah, that's what he does. Um, something, my, why, uh, it's, I, I, I can't see what he's, right, what he's written. That, that makes it worse. We're, we're lo we're, we need a, a Sharpie or something. Ah, my mic isn't working. Oh, brilliant. My mic isn't working. Uh, okay. All right. Well, that makes 10 of us. Let's go to the next film. The next film is called Unskin by uh, El Cid Asai. And um, yes, it's, uh, I, I, I won't even say anything about it until we've, uh, until we've spoken to El Cid because I don't want to make a, a, a knob of myself. Whoops, too late. Okay, Alan, let's, uh, let's have a look at the, yes, please, yeah. at the at Unskin. Let's start at the beginning. What is your aim today? The aim right now is to find a job. What attracted you to a career in finance? A chance to make a difference, sir. Excuse me. Can you give us some change, please? I read you've got a BSc as well as a BA. Mm, that is correct. And what made you choose a subject like sociology after mathematics? It was a very straightforward choice, sir. Once you get to know the numbers, you want to know how you can apply them to the world. Soon enough, you'll find that most of the problems of the world are a result of cold, hard numbers to ignore society's needs. So I needed to delve beyond the surface and beyond the artifice. Change. To experience society and not be indifferent to its flaws. And is that why you've been idle for the last three years between your studies and this interview? Not really, sir. I was writing. Writing? is unskin. It's a modern myth. It could take any shape or form. Any color, any gender is its construct. I see. And your little friend here? Is he part of the story? Or is he your good luck charm? To be frank, I don't know who selected you for this interview, but you've five minutes left on the clock. So I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Lay it out in front of me. I'm not sure you'd like to hear it, sir. Go on, humour me. 
Well? Begins on a day like today, when a mysterious being visits Earth and takes to observing its landscape and its inhabitants at first. But then, then all is not what it seems. The figures left disappointed, very disappointed.
And that is the end of the beginning. You don't really think that story will get to you anywhere? Change is coming. It's everywhere around us. You could be a part of it, or you could be one of his first victims. Your call, sir. That will be all.
All right, excellent. Well, that was uh, El Cid uh, Assay with, um, with Unskin. I think that El Cid is with us now. Ah, great, El Cid. Hey, there he is. There he is. Brilliant. Hello. Hi. There we go. Hi, El Cid. Hi. Hi. Yeah, so we saw Unskin. Yes. Yes. Very, a very dark film in a way, but, but kind of in a beautiful way. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, what was your inspiration for it? Uh, there, there was a lot of inspiration. Um, on, on one level, it's society, it's everything that's around us and how society functions um, and the divisiveness um, in the last few years, um, many years, we've had a lot of divisiveness where people are disconnected from one another and they feel um, disconnected. Mm. And a lot of that is to do with um, the artificiality of the world and how we function within it, um, mm -hmm. identity politics. So I really wanted to, I guess if you ask about the origin, I really wanted to uh, mediate on that and um, that is the very you know the very seed of the idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you had you been to any um, awful job interviews? Many, too many to count. Oh. <laughs> um, for, for what kind of jobs? Uh, it's when I didn't really know what I what I wanted to be and mm. I was going into PR and a lot of um, corporate marketing type of positions which I absolutely mm. hated um, and so I guess those were those, some of the inspiration was taken from there but then there's inspiration taken from um, films like The Adversary, um, Satyajit Rai, um, great mm. filmmaker, Indian filmmaker mm. so there's influences there and then and there was a lot of liberties taken in that scene anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and whereabouts was it shot? Uh, all over London, um, so it depends which scene, but um, it was shot all over London. So London Bridge, mm. um, City, then you have a mm. uh, place like West Hampstead, um, the office places were shot in some Regis building, I can't, I can't actually remember the actual station connected to it, but it's in West London. And then, right. yeah, it was all over. You had a bit of Trellick Tower in there, uh, Portobello Road. Um, you got the Highgate Estate. So you got a bit of everything. Mm. Wow. And what was the budget, if you don't mind me asking? It was, a, it, looked, it was a very slick film. Yeah, it was. So it was partly crowdfunded and partly self-financed. Um, do you mean the production budget or do you mean the overall budget? Um, oh, you mean like with marketing and all and all that? Yeah, I mean, no, no, the, mean like the entire thing or just the just the making? Um, the, well, the well, both really. Okay, so the making was around, I guess, four grand, and mm. the marketing was around two two grand, so about six grand altogether. Right, right. Wow, that's that's surprisingly low. I mean, yeah, I for, called, for the look of it, I called in a lot of favors. Oh um, yeah. Yeah, a lot of favors. Brilliant. Yeah, where would the film industry be without without exactly. favors? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Great. Um, I think we've got some questions here from um, from the audience. Um, Can I just ask, were, were those uh, professional dancers that you had in there? They were uh, professional they were dancers. They were training dancers, so they were all from different dance schools. Um, in order to be able to do that, I got um, a choreographer involved, and she's very good. Her name is Constantina Scalonta. Um, she's a British Cypriot um, choreographer, and she was brilliant. She really felt the I connected to the idea, and then she came on board, and yeah, she helped me realize the, what was written on the page onto the screen. Oh, very effective. That's really good. Thank you. Great, great to hear. Um, and uh, someone's written, uh, what kind of cameras you used? I, I'm not sure if this was a question for you, it was in the chat, but um, it, what kind of cameras did you use? Do you, we, we like to get technical sometimes here. 
Sure. Um, so <laughs> use Ari Alexa to do the majority of the film, but then a Sony A7S II was used for a few B-roll um, scenes, which we needed mm. to shoot um, after production um, had mm. finished. Cool. Cool, great. And what's, what's next? Do you, uh, what are you working on at the moment? So I'm working on, um, so I'm happy to say um, that I'm very busy. So I'm working on two features. Um, they will be my debut features. One of them I'm producing, the other one I'm writing myself uh, to direct. And I'm doing two shorts as well. Um, so they're both kind of, they came just before the quarantine. So in a way I've had a lot of time to develop them. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's trying to keep busy, trying to, trying to stay creative and trying to utilize this time to prepare for an uncertain future in the film industry. Sure, sure. And uh, where, where can we go to uh, see, your, see your new stuff and to keep up, it up to date? Uh, so I'm on Instagram. Um, you can follow me there if you like, uh, Mr. Underscore Underscore Minimalist. And I'm also on Vimeo. So if you'd like to see more of my work, it's Crimson Black Productions. Um, and yeah, there are links all over the shop in those, from those two places. So if you wanted to go further, you could. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Okay, well, thank you very much, Elsid, for, um, for sending it to us. And uh, No, thank you for having more. me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Cool. Great. And I've just seen that uh, the amazing Gwendolyn Foster has donated 20 quid for, the, uh, for Exploding Cinema's coffers. So let's all give her a clap. Thank you, Gwendolyn. Uh, well, we would unmute everyone if we could, but I can see you all clapping, and that's, uh, that's fantastic. I mean, um, you know, she's from America, and um, she's, uh, you know, her whole country's falling apart, and yet she's sending us uh, 20 quid, which is very nice of her. And, um, you know, I haven't got caught up in any of the, uh, you know, riots myself here in London. It's been kind of quiet on that respect. Uh, although a guy did... Uh, smacked me on the neck the other day. Uh, I should have gone to the uh, to the to the hospital, but I thought no, no, I did. I'll just leave it. I can probably feel be better um, uh, later. Uh, if I just leave it, you know, it'll uh, it'll probably uh, you know come right by itself. Um, so uh, so next. Oh shit! Okay, just a minute. There we go. There we go. Okay. Hang on. There we go. Lovely jubbly. Oh, I wish I could unmute you all. You all look like you enjoyed that little prank. Uh, anyway, so um, we'll get on to the next film and we'll maybe get to, back to El Cid when he joins us later in the, uh, in the chat room. Um, so the next film is, uh, oh, this is a great one. It's my favorite. Lockdown Daydream by Jade Manda. Uh, I think Jade has been waiting very patiently here in the room. And uh, this is great. This is this is the lockdown film for me personally. So, uh, Adam, let's let's see lockdown daydream.
Jade. Hello. Hey, finally. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Great. Thanks for uh, thanks for sticking around. Um, yeah, we've uh, unfortunately had a couple of cancellations from other filmmakers. One, one great Jake, Grace had a migraine, and um, but it's great to see you here. Um, I love that film. I, I think you really, you really summed up this sort of strange time where we've all got we've all got time to sort of just slow down and you know think about things and daydream. Is that mm. is that was that your intention? Well, it was really, I had this old footage um, of Norfolk's natural attraction sort of lying about, lying around, and I thought, what would be a good way of repurposing that material with newly shot material? Um, right. And I thought, well, most of us during the lockdown are probably going to be stuck indoors, staring at a ceiling, really bored. And I thought, um, well, having someone staring at a ceiling and then using that ceiling as a projection space for the world of their daydream would be a really good idea for a film. Um, yeah. So it's really about escapism and taking us to places we can't get to during the lockdown. Um, mm. And it also, also it's like contrasting the constraint between being stuck indoors with um, the freedom of exploring yourself outdoors. Um, so right. it's that contrast there. Right, right. Do you find that you've um, gone out in a way more now uh, during the lockdown than before? I mean, like just on just on walks and stuff and... Yeah, I've been out... Have before. I, I've been out quite a lot, but when I made this film, it was in early May, so that was when it was really strict in the UK. We can only go out mm. once a once a day, and um, mm. also I found that the people I've shown this film to, you know, see it as like a two minute meditation. You know, it mm. just completely calms them down during this period because everyone's like full of um, anxiety and worry. Um, mm. So it's a two minute meditation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It had the effect on me when I was uh, preparing this program of films. It was like. Uh... After that one, I thought, oh yeah, no, I, I kind of needed that. That was really nice. Um, so how has the uh, lockdown been to you personally? Have you been stuck editing this film all the time? And, um, uh, well, actually, you... this, is, this is the start of a series of lockdown videos I'm making um, okay. about lockdown uh, dreams. So this is the first one. So I've just finished um, a film which is called Lockdown Bath Daydream, um, and that's on my Vimeo channel. And I've just finished that. So that's set in the bath, and then it takes you to the seaside. Um, right. And I've also got three other lockdown videos in the pipeline, which right, have different right, dreams. Right. So I've got one about a nightmare um, and, and someone being scared of the dark and that the dark kind of bringing out all your insecurities. Um, yeah. And then one about the Bluebell Wood and then one about swans. So it's, right. it's, it's another three films to make. But wow. I've definitely yeah, kept yeah. myself occupied. Yeah, yeah. We, we, our first tentative date for a, a live show is the 21st of November this year uh, and I think we'll still be showing lockdown videos uh, mm. <laughs> films yeah this way yeah. yeah yeah brilliant um okay so what's the name of your Vimeo channel so we can um... uh it's Jade Manda Jade Manda yeah okay yeah and is that that's the place to find all your films all your lockdown films yeah uh, also have a YouTube channel as well but that's oh. Jade Manda as well so okay, it's Jade fine. Manda for both brilliant great well um let's see if there's a uh, there's a there's a comment here. A couple of comments have come in. Gwendolyn says, it's a very impressive film, a celebration of the imagination which keeps us from going nuts, hopefully. And, and George Gower says, uh, the film reminds me of the ceiling fan scene in Apocalypse Now. I thought the film was fantastic. I agree with it being a meditative style of filmmaker, filmmaking. And uh, Duncan Riki says, I actually saw a Kingfisher this morning in West London. And, um, and oh, here's an actual question. Um, what sort of themes do you usually explore in your work? Um, so pretty much everything, but mainly sort of boredom, um, escapism, mm -hmm. um, that kind of thing. It's, it's just my, my films ask quite deep questions in people and there's no kind mm -hmm. of conclusive answer, but um, it is, it, it's kind of like a technical experimentation, these lockdown videos. So it's, I like the film of technical standpoint, I like to show these films having some kind of progression. So in this film, it, it starts off with the images being quite transparent in the daydream, and then by mm. the end, they become more solid, which is supposed mm. to show the character becoming more fully immersed into the world of the daydream, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, yeah, to me. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Um, um, well, yes, that's, um, so Doug, brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Jade, yeah, no problem. for the film. It was a lovely film, and, um, and uh, good luck with the, uh, with the other 
the other lockdown videos. Thank you. Great, that was uh, Jade Manda there. Well, look, uh, we're uh, we're moving on. We're almost at the end of the show now. We uh, we are getting to the last two films, and the next one, the penultimate film of the evening, is bibliosyncratic, oh, idiosyncratic. Sorry, my my eyes aren't uh, quite what they were. Idiosyncratic by Jake Martin Graves, and uh, it involves a format that's very dear to my heart, which is Super Eight. get to be Peter Pan as the inherited damage control cleanup crew. First, don't come again. They reach the end of the line and what you love and what you loathe run out of time, those first times become the last. all you cling on to, hit that whiskey nerve, that last time you see someone, that last time I go to that place. The last time I'm pissed off by a faded memory making my skin crawl. It's like being left alone, wishing you could just start over. No more chances, not for you. You always bragged about having a top-notch guardian angel, but you didn't bank on him taking a day off, all because you wanted that next trip, the kind you don't come back from. Without asking for it, I'm now playing a new game. Calling the shots when you should be bunking off one foot into the new world and you realise it's not just one person who died today. recognize me now. Better put on a strong face or I won't either. One takes the hit, the other takes the drop. All I want is a chance. A new moment. Just like those ones I hated the most. Jake Martin Graves, who made Idiosyncratic. Maybe we should start cautiously unmuting people. What do you think, Adam? <laughs> and we can actually have a bit more dialogue going on instead of me just, uh, just dictating to 
to the room. We could add to the anarchy. <laughs> a little bit of anarchy towards the end. We've got one more film, and it's by our very own David Vie. Yay! <laughs> he's on. He's. You've, are you muted? Yeah, he's, he's muted. No, no, he's not. No, he's not. I got it wrong. I, I keep it quiet. I try to keep it quiet tonight. It's all right. We we had a good day, so I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Uh, there's a question. I want to unmute Jay because Jay has an actual question. Um, but that was for the previous film. What what sort of uh, film stock? Super eight. You're processing super eight things. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that. I teach people how to uh, shoot their own Super 8. It's all on a bit of hiatus at the moment until we work out how to do it two meters away from the person. Do you say hiatus? Super hiatus. Oh my God. Uh, you know what? I made, an un <laughs> I made a, a completely unknowing, brilliant joke there. I did. I said my hiatus. about eight, brilliant. My hiatus class is on a hiatus. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just blew my own mind there. <laughs> you know, you know, instead of working out instead of working out the bugs in the system, I spent all morning creating this effect. If that is obvious. <laughs> it, it was worth it. <laughs> worth it. <laughs> you didn't Thank color grade you. your neck and your No, your I did. Face. That's why the that's why the background is all peachy looking, because uh. that's how the light looked this afternoon. Uh, well, that's your house. That. Michael Gove's bookshelf. Uh, no, but I'll tell you one thing, that Coca cola bottle uh, above my uh, shoulder there, there's uh, some Coke bottles. The one that looks like a normal Coke bottle is in fact a very rare 1999 Eclipse special edition from Romania. Wow. It was, um, wow. It was made in, it was so rare that I can't even find how much it's worth on any Coke bottle um, uh, websites. Let's I'm stunned. Stunned. Then. So I'm just going to hang on to it and, um, you know, hopefully no one will drink it at a party or something. You just advertised that to all the criminal uh, underworld of That's true. That is actually South the most valuable. It might be the most valuable thing I own, including all my Super 8 cameras. <laughs> well, it's been the platform for David I. Platform for David I. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, Angel, really, I mean, uh, <laughs> Professor Shishara really stirred things up. Yes. Anyway, let's let's, yes. let's 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 see David's film before we devolve this whole thing into like slander and David whatnot. Icke's film. David the VA's <laughs> film, and it's it's one good one to end off on because it's called Strong Peace. Oh, and that's what what anyone wants really in life, isn't it? <laughs> Strength and peace. Some more than others. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Everyone, be quiet. Adam's going to show the film. Yay. David. Well done, baby. I always wondered what Earth sounded like from space. <laughs> let's let's do a round of thanks. Are there any last um, last messages we ought to be giving? Like uh, next show. Next show will be on the eleventh uh, of July, I believe. That's right. 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 Excellent. And um, Duncan will be uh, programming that. Where is he? Big round of applause to the filmmakers. Well done. Yes. <laughs> Big round of applause. Great show. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. We've got yeah, about three, three filmmakers left. That's fantastic. What? Uh, Duncan, what are you pointing at? Joe says, fuck David Icke. Oh, oh. That's what YouTube <laughs> says as well. George says, George says, nice to see some stop motion. Actually, there's a point. We are, aren't we supposed to do a Q&A with you now, David? 
What's a strong yeah, piece? What is what is the yeah, meaning of strong strong piece? You need to unmute David. Uh, is he? Okay. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it was uh, I made this film just before the last event coming up. Obviously, I think it's good to remind people that uh, peace is a good thing and uh, non-violent and non-violent event and non-violent activity, including a street cinema, is a very good idea to entertain people and to make people do things together. So basically, yes, a strong piece was a, it came out of a, a drunk drawing where I missed the T and I just went and started learning my uh, uh, premiere skills by doing the, my first titles and stuff. So basically, I'm still very basic on my filmmaking, but I'm doing it bit by bit. Yeah, it took like, uh, it took me 20 years and uh, pandemic to start doing films so hopefully i'll carry on and keep doing it but yeah i just finished the first and first. i came in england to do like an anime with like an animation in my head and uh, i just i just managed to do that with obs this week so hopefully mm. i will show it sometime and i made a film as well as far with some i made another film that i will show on gay pride at a gay pride event so but the uh, yeah it's good. I'm quite happy. But for the moment, I'm using the pandemic. I'm using the COVID-19 as a good side. For me, it's, there's some good side of being locked down. Okay, David. Uh, I don't know whether you've seen it, but like, uh, um, I basically used the same sound that you used in your film. It, it, inside one of the promos that I made for Exploding Cinema. And that was, we just chose the same sound. <laughs> just randomly. Excellent. The Cassini space probe. Is that a coincidence or you basically just reuse the sound I, I used? No, no, no. I, I basically chose sound even before I saw your film. And it just, it just <laughs> we chose the same sound. <laughs> Excellent. You we were on it. I think way. it's interesting that um, OBS is now being used as a, a platform for animation. Um, just its features, like in, in text and moving images and stuff. Yeah. Do you think, do you think OBS is going to be uh, used for a variety of tasks in the future? Or? Right. But see, I like to um, I like to upload the second version, just that I will dedicate it to mixing rather than streaming. Apparently the setting setting are different. So basically, anyway, I'm still finding out, and basically I'm still I'm inside myself. I'm disgusted when I see Adam's work. Basically, there is so much work he does with I think he's illustrator or something. And uh, basically, I'm so little compared to that. But I'm still I got a lot to learn. So basically, I will give myself some time to learn it, or just do something else. Really. But um, he's alright. So basically. OBS is a very nice little tool, a very nice little toy for me. Mm. And just to let people know, OBS is the software that we're using to do the live stream. Yeah. In case anyone doesn't know. This for OBS was dedicated to, is dedicated to streaming. The editing are very limited. It's not, it's not editing, it's to do live. It's meant to be designed to do live, um, no, live streaming. Mm. It's very good for live for live video. It, it 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 does everything in real time, and it does things which I didn't believe my computer's sound card were even capable of. Yeah. And so I can really and it's free as well. Oh. What's that? YouTube. Who is speaking? Is that uh, is that Jade? Yes. We heard a. I have. I heard a. Is there anybody else who wanted to speak? Have we, have we, um, oh, everyone's muted. Yeah. Can, why don't we unmute everyone? They're not muted. Many of them are. Well, this is, I think, no, look, look, at, look at the other side. Well, I'm going to try unmuting them just in case anyone's got something left to say. So the next show will be in a month. 
And um, no, I think everyone the really needs to think so. doing programming next time. The guy who's putting his name as I H U Hall is like that's the guy, the next, the next troublemaker. <laughs> we didn't have any trouble tonight. We didn't have any um, invasions. Oh, anyway. Well, anyway, yeah. Hmm. Anyway, um, well, I guess if I've done everything else, then um, then then. For anyone who wants to see Ben, James has just po posted the OBS link in the uh, chat. Oh, brilliant! If anyone wants to scoop that out of there and type it into your Firefox. Yeah. Uh, very good. George says you can use Twitch as YouTube, so OBS okay. could be another streaming platform in the future. Yeah, from OBS you can go anywhere. There's a whole list, a whole drop-down list of different platforms. We don't, we're not necessarily tied to cheat to YouTube. We've only got like 150 Twitch, people following Twitch us. Twitch is owned by Amazon, though. Be warned. Uh oh. Yeah, we're looking for a. We're looking for a. We're looking for a bespoke, like a independent kind of uh, um, platform, really, if we can. The French version is Daily Motion. Daily Motion. Yeah, they're French. Yeah. yeah. They are French, but, but they do have yeah. English pages, so I think you can still follow in English. Yeah, yeah, they have stuff. They have stuff that you can't put on YouTube. Daily Motion. Can you? No, oh, yeah. Um, uh, I just Daily Motion. I didn't dare to change to French language to basically try to understand their. They got a lot of stuff that would get copyright struck in on YouTube. They got like episodes of TV shows and whole movies and stuff like that. Okay. Anyway, Excellent. well, I should do some search. I should start using it right, rather than putting my things up there. Yeah, because yes. I've been like updating it from this is my new uh, internet channel. So but, yeah, I've been updating some yeah. stuff there. I'm trying um, to some stuff. But anyway, we'll see how it goes. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you, David, for um, strong peace. <laughs> thank you. Keep keep sending us stuff. I will. I will. Keep strong. Thank you. Oh. Yes. All, we, all you're saying is give peace a chance. Give peace a chance. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, um, uh, if anyone, no one's got anything else to say. The show is uh, pretty much grinding to a halt. Uh, we've uh, we've got um, no more films for tonight, but we will be back on the 11th of July uh, online again. And we've already had a whole rush of, of, of uh, new submissions. So get yours in. You've got a film. And uh, Duncan will be, uh, who's been slowly fading into the background. Now he's just a pile of tins. Duncan, are you still there? Very nice tins. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He's yeah. done a runner. He's probably going on now, isn't it? He's gone to he's open. Probably, he's probably collapsed onto his green screen. <laughs> and uh, knocked it over and <laughs> um all right well listen that adam was on the tech tonight and um thank you very much adam yeah oops and david was uh on door he let everyone in tonight so thank you david thank you for being on, on that yes um, this wonderful raffle. I'm telling you, I don't get the penetrate. Okay, Duncan's finally partly returned. I don't know what you did tonight, but uh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for being Duncan. You find the login, if I find the plugin for the audio, I don't know okay. if it went to that. It sounds an audio plugin. I'm, right. I'm doubting that it was just the weather on the phone. Yeah, well done, guys. Great show. <laughs> yes, well done, Matt. Matt did the vision mixing tonight, which is a job that never we never had to do in the past, but now we're... Uh, and... Uh, there we go. And James. James has been our online guru since the late mid-90s. Mid What's the stash? How's the pizza? How's the pizza, James? Oh, James. <laughs> and um, thanks again to our uh, filmmakers. That's uh, Jade. Thank Can't you very much for your film. <laughs> thanks. Yeah, I, I'm gonna, we're going to have to start muting people. Woo! Thank you, Woo! Jade. There we go. Yes.
And also, thank you, George, for the uh, Camera Obscura film. Wait, oh, yeah, yeah, film exploding Cinema first, I think. All right, so that's good. Great. Thanks. Thanks, guys. And um, let's see, who else have we got here? What? Um, Robert. Robert Joyce. Yeah, he's been. Um, been with us all night. Been, he's been putting comments, very, very nice comments in the box. They have not gone unnoticed. Thank you, Robert, for all of those. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's everyone who's left, I think. I'm Ben. Way. I mean, yes, thank you very much. That's me. Yes, I you shall be. Uh, really fun. You, you love the head coming off. Yes, that was that was the best, I think, of the evening. Whoops. I've got to show you something. I've got to show you something. It's a good job that didn't come off. I've shown some of you. I made this thing. It's, um, it's a piece of card with some gels attached at an angle, like at a V shape. And I popped that over my uh, laptop, camp, uh, the top of my laptop. So I get different. I can oh. tint. I can tint my camera. All sorts of oh, colors. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, and some of them, some of them don't work with the blue screen. Some of them, blue, the blue screen goes all, uh, rather green screen goes all messed up. When, um, but this is the best thing of all. I've saved this till the end because uh, I like to geek out and I didn't want to drive half the audience off, but now they've gone already, it doesn't matter. Okay, <laughs> so I call this, I call this the lens of truth. Okay, because what you see behind me is actually not Sir Alec Guinness and um, Jürgen Christensen or whatever, Hayden Christian. What is that? That is what's actually going on. So if I put it right up to the uh, camera, there we go. See, it's just me in front of a green screen. Yeah, isn't that mental? That's really cool. To do something with that one day. It should, Zoom. It should be Zoom is And the other thing was, Back the curtain. I, was, I was wearing this half the night. Oops. I was wearing this half the night. Um, which is a, and isn't that a lizard behind you? No, David Icke. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, David Icke. What, what happened there? <laughs> He's back. So, I, so if I put this on, but it's horrible poly. This cost two quid a meter. It's really <laughs> cheap. It's really cheap. So now I'm wearing this kind of smock. And that's how I do the floating head. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there we go. We've got We've a floating cat today. There we go. Oh, I'm, like that. I'm Yoda. There we go. <laughs> Come on, boys. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I'm home. I like a bit of rough and smooth. There we go. Like we do. Yes, yes, we do. Yes, back we will go to my hole. We're all force ghosts. Okay, well, that, 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 that concludes exploding. I, I, don't, I have nothing more. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fiery head the best. Fiery the fiery head. head. Yeah, that was pretty oh, mental, that the one. The head on fire was fantastic. That was really good. But the fiery head. I'll, I'll do that again, because while we're all here, spend enough time on this bloody thing. <laughs> um, there we go. So the fiery head was, oh, yeah, well, I had to, you know, do, put this thing on. And do the fire, and that went with I think the orange filter or the red filter. Oh, I had to. I had to. Why the flames were licking around the front of your face. It was yeah, it was mental. I was. Um, <laughs> there we go. Um, oh, that's amazing. Whoops. <laughs> Hang on. Well, that's quite good. Wow. <laughs> ah! I spent too long in the sun yesterday, and uh, as you can see. <laughs> ah! Got me burning. Got me. Yeah, that was an unintentional. So there's tons of shit you can do with, with green screens, and they're, they're great fun. That's, I'm trying to get it to uh, go how it was. You see, you can choose what color to make the green screen. That's the, that's the key to it in your Zoom settings. Here we go. Uh, I don't know if that's... I don't know, it looked better before. I, I got it on some kind of weird combo, and it never looked as good as that since. Anyway. Uh, it looks great. Okay. All right. Well, it'll be recorded and, and shit. So, uh, yeah, we'll put it all together. We'll put it up on our website. But the whole show, maybe we'll edit out some of the more glaring, horrible bits. And if Arthur, um, Brown, if Arthur Brown had known about that 50 years ago, he'd probably still. I think, I th isn't he still alive and doing like shows? 
He's yeah. Like the crazy he she was with Grace Connor, yeah. Well, he did. Yeah. Grace, Grace sent a, a thing saying she had a migraine and she wasn't feeling well. Really? So she couldn't, she couldn't do a Q&A. Oh, yeah. She wants so, to come uh, back on Sunday. She needs some rain. She needs some what? Rem? Rain. rain. Oh, rain, rain, rain. I'm half deaf. There we go. All right, I'll start turning off the lights now. <laughs> then, it'll, then, it'll, then it'll go crazy world. Okay, that, now, it's just, <laughs> now it's just weird. <laughs> cool. Whoa. Cool. All right, all right, enough of me showing off here. Thank you all very much. Cheers. So, Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Thank you very much. And, um, yeah, Thanks. I'll see you all at, uh, when, when, when this perpetual nightmare is over at a live show. Perpetual of a nightmare of having to do these online shows. Having to do them, we chose to do them. We're not making money or anything. We're just uh, we're exploring the new frontier, which is how we've survived for thirty or almost thirty years. Thirty next year, Jesus. And only just entered the twenty-first century. Yeah, that's by time. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Bye. See you later. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Nice one. Well done, all. Thanks for coming. The mental.